So this is chapter three, lessons four and five. These two lessons can be combined because the rules for multiplying and dividing are so similar that I can teach you one strategy and it works for both. So nice, quick lesson here. Let's get started. In your notes, you are going to see a triangle like the triangle I have here. Yours is in a little bit of a different spot, uh, but find it and please fill it out the way that I'm going to fill it out right now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a multiplication sign and a division sign on the inside of this triangle. This rule that I'm going to show you only works for multiplying and dividing. This is so, so easy, but what I notice is sometimes when seventh graders learn this rule, they try to use it for other operations like adding or subtracting and it just doesn't work that way. So this rules for multiplying and dividing. The next thing I want you to do is take a pencil and in the top corner of that triangle I want you to put a plus sign and in the bottom two um, angles or bottom two corners put your negative signs. So um, this triangle is a little bit of a hack to help us to remember our rules for multiplying and dividing integers. Okay, so what I am going to do is this. If we are multiplying or dividing two numbers, we are going to use our finger and we're going to cover up the signs of the numbers in the problem. And the uncovered sign is the sign that will be in our answer. So I can't show you my real hands or real fingers here, so I have some cartoony hands. And we are going to do question number one right here. So question number one says negative 15 times negative 4. So negative 15, that's my, um, my way of covering that up. Let me see if I can do a better job of that. Let's see. There we go. So I use my finger to cover up one of those negative signs. I'm going to use my other cartoony finger here to cover up the other negative sign. And that tells me that the uncovered symbol is the sign of my answer. So a negative times a negative gets me a positive answer. Okay, so negative times a negative is a positive, and that means that to multiply these two numbers together, all we do is we multiply like normal. 15 times 4 is the number 60. And since a negative times a negative is a positive, I can put that sign there and leave it as positive 60, or I can just leave it as the number 60 because we know that means it's a positive answer. How easy is that? It works every time, okay? Let's do another one here. Let me get my cartoon fingers back into position. So number two says negative 60 divided by three. We've got a negative divided by a positive. So we cover up those two signs and the uncovered sign is the sign of my answer. So my answer is going to be a negative number. And then we just divide as normal. 60 divided by three is 20. Right, this is great, great, great stuff. Number three, well now we've got a whole bunch of negatives, so we have to um, kind of have to do this step by step, but I am going to show you a little hack for it. Um, take you back up to my triangle here. Remember something, anytime we take a negative times a negative, we get a positive answer. And that's only two numbers at a time that we can do here. But I can use that to help speed up my problem in number three a little bit. A negative times a negative is a positive. So let's take a look at this. In number three, I have a negative times a negative right here. So that's going to get me a positive answer for those two numbers. Here's another negative times a negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. Here's another two. Negative times a negative is a positive. And then I have one negative sign left over. Okay, so a positive times a positive. We've been doing that a long time. That's a positive answer. A positive times a positive. We've been doing that a long time. That's a positive answer. And this guy still hasn't been used yet. So finally, a positive times a positive is going to get me a positive. And now I can bring that negative sign down. A positive times a negative will get me a negative in my answer. 
Okay, so that was kind of a long way to look at that. I'll slow it down or I'll speed it up a little bit. I'm going to show you that one more time. Um, I, kind of, I could have probably showed this in much fewer steps, but I'll do it again. Negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive, and then I have one negative left over. Because we know positive times positives always get us positive answers. This one negative sign right here is enough to turn my entire answer negative. Okay, so I just did a short hack here to see if every negative had another negative to pair up with it to turn it positive. And since this one didn't, it's going to keep my final answer to be a negative. Now we'll do the math. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64, times 2 is 128. We'll see more of that, but you're going to want to know that hack. That's a good trick, okay? Last question. This is an order of operations problem. We've been doing a couple of these every lesson uh, just to keep our order of operation minds sharp. So I'm going to take this expression and move it over here. Three times the quantity of negative 6 plus 4 minus 5. So I have to follow the order of operations. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. And I have to keep my parentheses around that negative 2 because I've got this 3 here. And when I have a 3 next to parentheses, any number next to parentheses, that tells me I'm going to be multiplying. Okay, so this is a multiplication problem here. 3 times negative 2, a positive times a negative. You can check our triangle if you'd like. Positive times a negative. Positive times a negative gets me a negative answer. So negative, uh, positive 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 5, we're going to add a line and change the sign. Negative 6 plus negative 5 is negative 11. So my numerator is going to be negative 11. Now I'm going to solve the denominator. Parentheses first, negative 4 minus 5, I have to add a line and change the sign. Negative 4 plus negative 5 is negative 9. I am going to keep that in parentheses. You technically don't have to, but I'd rather be safe and make my negative sign kind of stand out there. Positive 18 divided by negative 9. Come back up here. A positive divided by a negative gets me a negative answer. I love this question. You're going to see it soon, okay? 18 divided by negative 9 is negative answer. 18 divided by 9 is 2. And that leaves me with this negative 11 over negative 2. Okay, so I know you're not happy with that as a final answer, so let's talk about it. Negative 11 divided by negative 2. Well, the first thing we're not happy about is the fact that we have this cruddy negative in the numerator and negative in the denominator thing going on. So a negative divided by a negative, we can check our triangle up here. Negative divided by a negative gets me a positive answer. So those two negatives are actually going to cancel out. It's going to get me a positive answer over here. I'll put a little plus sign to remind me, and then I can ignore those negatives and pretend they were never there. Okay? Now drop your 11 into the house. 2 goes into 11 5 times. I get 10, and I subtract and get a remainder of 1. That 1 goes to the numerator, 2 goes to the denominator, and my final answer here is 5 and 1 half. Why did I solve that with fractions, you may ask? Because it was a fraction problem to begin with. That's a fraction problem. Fraction problems give fraction answers. Okay? Alrighty. Um, remember that triangle? Very important rule for us. That's going to be a big, big uh, help to us in all of our homework and all of our quizzes whenever we're multiplying or dividing positive and negative integers. Go ahead and do your practice problems, and we will go over any questions you may have tomorrow during class.